Hello, welcome to MOSIS Live Lab Stories. I'm Ben Tilbrook. I work in business development and sales for MOSIS. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining and I hope you're all keeping well. Um, you just saw a very brief uh, showreel from MOSIS, the uh, past projects. At the very end there, you would have seen Dave uh, on the piano at the Brit Awards. Uh, that was quite an interesting project for us where MOSIS collaborated with Disguise and Bloom and Associates. Uh, we did something a little bit different um, in that instance uh, where we, people thought it was actually AR um, on the piano and actually wasn't. It was a projection onto the top of the piano and we actually used the Star Tracker to actually lock that projection. Uh, we also, instead of traditionally like we put the sensor on top of the camera facing up, we actually turned it upside down underneath the camera and put reflective black stickers on a black stage uh, and it worked absolutely flawlessly. So today uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of housekeeping quickly. Um, it's going to be a 45 minute webinar approximately, uh, 30 minutes uh, presentations with 15 minutes Q&A at the end. Uh, you can ask questions throughout the webinar. Um, if you look at the bottom of your screens uh, in Zoom, you should have a Q&A section there. So if you type your questions into there, um, we've got one of our field support technicians, Marcus Wooker in the background. Uh, he'll either be responding privately to those questions or we'll carry them over to the end for the Q&A session. Um, so today's story is a, a company uh, called Netic based in Italy. Um, we sent them a star tracker a couple of weeks back. Uh, they've got a disguise system and an XR stage. Uh, and I think you would have seen a, a short video of uh, the setup and we'll show you a bit of a longer video uh, very shortly. Um, so we've got three panelists uh, today and they are, we've got Tazio Simoncini, he's a technical manager at Netic Group. Uh, we've got Nicholas DeFonzo, Disguise Specialist, and we've got Lance Short, uh, Technical Solutions Manager, EMEA at Disguise. So um, without further ado, I think we'll probably start with the video from Netic uh, setting up so you can see that for yourselves. I'm Tazio Simoncioni. I'm a technical director of Netic Group Evolution. We have gathered a team of professionals for the creation of our XR stage. This is our um, XR stage. We got three different elements. Uh, the first one is camera tracking with Moses Star Tracker system. Uh, the second one uh, is a real time engine with Notch. Third one is media server with these guys. I'm uh, Paolo Poletti, I'm camera engineer of this project uh, uh, XR Stage. Uh, I want to talk to you about the MOSIS. Uh, MOSIS uh, is uh, an absolute uh, system, world-to-world -world tracking. We use this sticker, we fixed about 150 stickers on the roof, and uh, MOSIS uh, uh, see this star, these stars, and uh, he can uh, find the position his position. If we move, we can look here. Now we are, we are looking about uh, 213 uh, star. If I move the camera, we can see millimetric movement of the pan tilt and the position of the camera. We can use uh, a simple camera. Now we are using a Jimmy Jeep crane, uh, but you can use uh, everything. Star Tracker gives uh, to the camera a full free of movement. Uh, we can move like in a normal stage. And uh, we can send uh, the data, the precision data in real time uh, to the, the rest of the system. Another interesting thing in uh, XR, you can see the, your slide and you can make your convention. I see the continent, I see everything. And uh, everything matched with my real world. This is our first experience with Moses and it's been quite amazing. 
Actually, we didn't expect the stat tracker to be this reliable and exact. It's work in a perfect symbiosis with the other system we are using. We have also had a great and very professional support from the Moses team during setup. Fantastic results in such a short space of time. I think the setup was around two days for that, so it's just great to see the progress these guys have made with bringing those systems together. Um, I think now we're going to go over to Taxio uh, at Netic in Italy. So Taxio, if you can take over from here, thank you. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. I'm Taxio. This is our XR stage. And uh, two months ago, I spoke with my friend uh, Nicolas. And we ask ourselves what great thing we could do in the lockdown period. He said, why not extend the reality? Okay, you got a LED wall, server, lights, and so on. I say, okay, perfect. Uh, you are this guy's specialist, the number one in Italy. Nicolas also had a notch artist, Fabio Bompani. So there we had uh, our team. Now we go uh, to our slide. Every, do you see everything? Okay. So. What elements do we need to create uh, this uh, XR stage? Number one, camera tracking. Number two, real-time engine. Number three, physical LED wall. Number four, media server playback. <laughs> So, how do these elements come together? Uh, we need to match the real world with the LED wall, with the virtual world uh, using a tracking system. The best way to match all these in real time is by using uh, this guy, Media Server. As you can see, we choose a notch uh, as a real time engine. It's because the notch uh, is a perfect match with these guys because the notch artist uh, can create a virtual world and export it in a DLL block and make it uh, work in symbiosis inside the media server like a layer in uh, these guys. For example, the notch artist can decide together with these guys specialists, in this case, uh, Nicolas and Fabio Mompani, which, which parameter to expose. Uh, the first parameter maybe is <laughs> uh, Spoonable Kmore. So, um, I'll give you some advice for the workflow. Um, this is what we learn uh, from our experience. Number one, the first thing to do is to give all interested parties the exact measurement of the venue, like uh, DVG or uh, like uh, Cinema 4D or something like that. Number two, position the stickers in the ceiling following the user manual above the area you, you have to play in to include for the movement of, of the broadcast camera, in this case, crane. Number three, decide in common point zero. For three system, we facilitate the work. It's not necessary, but maybe uh, the first step uh, uh, facilitated all, all, uh, all works. Uh, number four, have a clear and precise idea how uh, how the crane should move and therefore choose the correct lens for the camera from the beginning. Number five, your uh, LED walls need to be mounted to perfection. Make sure floor uh, left and right is perfectly aligned with uh, no gaps between them. If you have the smallest gap, this will show on the virtual screen. Number six, lights must correspond to the color temperature of a LED wall and they must illuminate the darkest part of the LED and the camera have to be the same uh, color temperature. Number seven, determine the best this guy workstation. workstation. In this case, we got a GX2C. Number eight, everything needs to be gel locked. So next, next slide. 
Now we'll share with you our uh, system diagram. Let's see more in detail how everything is connected. We have, the, uh, we have a media server disguise, GEX2C in the middle, like a man cell for everything. Um, um, we have a workstation for notch artist uh, where he creates the virtual world. We also have uh, the camera crane with the Panasonic lens. Uh, and this is the camera we want to track using the Moses Star Tracker. The Star Tracker sensor unit is mounted, as you saw in the video, above the camera. And the processor unit is mounted under the camera. The Star Tracker system send the UDP data in real time to the disguised media server. If the procedure of the alignment of the star tracker is made correctly, you will see the, your camera in this guy's stage. I think Nicolas uh, will give you deeper um, into this. So here we, we have uh, the real world, which uh, is uh, our LED wall. I've, uh, maybe I will show you the delivery raster later. From the beginning, we mounted the LED wall three by three meter, left and right and floor but uh, then we can increase the floor to, we, we increase the floor to, to four by four meter and left and right four by three meter. Everything is in uh, HDMI 2.0. The first out from these guys go to the switcher, in this case, Aquilon analog way for the best control of the three LED screen. The second out here, um, is the virtual screen and also this, go, this one goes to the switcher for splitting and convert for the broadcaster. Comfort monitor, delivery encoder, and maybe so on, what is not problem. All devices need to be John locked here. Also the sender for the LED wall. In, the, in this case, we have the sync generator black burst with the PAL 50Rs. So the whole project uh, here uh, run in 50Rs and the camera run in progressive because the virtual world run uh, in progressive. So now we talk about um, camera tracking. So this is our, our experience and uh, also why we choose Moses. The first one, uh, it's easy to align the zero X Y point and the height of tracking map for, to the real world. Number two, uh, the auto line function can provide the millimetric and a very precise positional and rotational data of the camera, including a CCD offset. Number three, the software has a dashboard control with a lot of function, uh, controlling the delay data for a correct sync with disguise, uh, for a jittering, something like that. Number four, uh, the encoder for the lens, in this case Canon lens, uh, automatically gives the lens data, zoom and focus value to these guys. We got, uh, in this case, in our case, in our, in our XR stage, we got data like uh, auto totally zoom out, like uh, 65,500 uh, value, uh, totally zoom in is zero. Number five, if your, your sticker has been placed in the correct way, wall to wall, you will never lose tracking. Number six, the start tracker is absolutely in tracking system. It will not lose uh, its position when switching off uh, and on. Really, really amazing. Number seven, the position and rotational value of the start tracker screen always correspond to the real world measurement. So, my chair. <laughs> this is the Mozi start tracker system package. Here we got the processor unit. Uh, here we got um, a screen monitor you can place uh, everywhere you want. Maybe in the control room where the, um, the engineer or camera engineer stay to control uh, uh, the crane. Uh, sensor unit is mounted uh, up to the camera. Uh, focus and lens zoom encoder. Gel lock is really important and the UDP stream. So, next slide. This is a photo from uh, the first time we mounted the star tracker. Uh, we did a test on a tripod camera here. Uh, we did uh, um, the screen position receiver. It already exists in this guy's device, Moses. 
And uh, as you can see, we immediately saw our camera in the disguise stage, really, really immediately. So in this photo, uh, you have the Moses monitor where you can see the locket star here. And we have an optical goon. This means uh, that the camera can identify it uh, in position perfectly. Next slide. Here you can see the sensor unit mounted uh, on the crane camera. Next slide. This is our delivery raster. Uh, it was divided through the Aquilon layers and sent to our three senders. With these three senders, we could control in exact way the three screen. Uh, all uh, senders, uh, Novastar, uh, 4K, uh, we control exactly every, every screen. The, the important thing is that all screen have identical position color or at least as similar uh, as, uh, as possible. Next slide. As you can see on this photo, I have calculated the position color, red, green, and blue for my reference screen, and, the co and then copy it to the, the another, uh, the, to, to the other standard. Because when we, we make a calibration color with these guys, maybe you can find a screen more similar uh, to the virtual world. And okay, this is my screen reference. I take all uh, uh, my, my data from uh, position color of this kind of screen, X and Y uh, luminance, and uh, copy uh, as soon as possible uh, to the other screen. For me, it's the, um, it's the better way for, for our screen. Um, this is what I want to share with you today. Hello? Thank you, Tatsio. That was great. Thanks for sharing your setup with us. Uh, very interesting indeed. Amazing what you've achieved in such a short space of time, as I said earlier. Um, please remember, everyone, you've still got the Q&A section at the bottom there of your Zoom, so get your questions coming in and we'll answer them either immediately or after a Q&A session. Um, I think we're going to go across to Nicholas now. Nicholas, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Great, over to you. Okay, I will share as well my uh, my screen. Okay, so I'm here to share my experience on uh, this uh, XR setup. Uh, was the first time for me, so um, I'm quite happy with the result and how everything works together. And uh, this was the the setup so looks uh, quite easy so three led surfaces uh, three by three meter um, i apologize of the quality of the picture i uh, will show you in the movie i'm not used to, to take picture to share them on the web uh, it was only for me to to to, to keep a part of my uh, work so okay so it was a three by three meter led uh, left left right and floor um, here we can see better and um, so we can see uh, that in DD3 I have the same uh, surfaces so the same LEDs what I have on my uh, on my screen on my stage of DD3 is what is really uh, outside so it's uh, pixel perfect and here we can see the, the, the view of the camera so the final result with the set extension. So the D3 is uh, extended the real world in a uh, virtual. Um, this is a movie we made, I made in the beginning. We were quite happy. Uh, you can see some elements in front here uh, in, the, in the front plate. So this is um, how it's working. So um, actually um, we have a real camera that is moving and uh, the D3 have has a, um, a virtual camera that moves as well. So the real one is sending data through the MOSIS system, uh, the positional data and then the rotation data uh, to D3. So in this way, in D3, uh, the virtual one moves in the, exactly in the same position of the, of the real one. 
and uh, at the same time uh, all the content are changing in real time to match exact exactly the uh, the perspective of the camera so what i was doing here was to touch uh, the elements that i had uh, next to me uh, only to show you that uh, with the leds it's more easy to interact with the with the stuff you have uh, around you with the picture you have uh, instead of a uh, green screen um, so next uh, uh, these uh, are two pictures that can show you how the process of the calibration works. So the tree, the D3 is receiving data from the camera, but no needs to match the the real world with the with the virtual one. So uh, how it works? So the D3 is sending in the real world, so on the LEDs, uh, white uh, uh, blobs and stripes, so he can look on the real camera like it is here below. And then he can understand, uh, depending of the distortion of the blobs, uh, depending, depending of what he see uh, in the camera, in the real world, he can understand how to match the virtual one. So in this case, the green stuff here, this pattern green is a virtual one. So it's in virtual. And then uh, the white ones are in the real one. So after that, this process is called observation. After a few observations, the D3 can understand how to match the, uh, the virtual world with the, uh, with the real one. Um, this is one, this is image. Uh, in this image, we can see how uh, the D3 can help you uh, to understand how uh, uh, he's going. I mean, how accurate is your uh, uh, calibration? In my case, it was not good in this moment. Um, so how it works so uh, if the as much the uh, color dots are matching with the white ones as much uh, it means uh, that as much the calibration uh, is accurate so uh, the color ones needs to match with the white ones uh, it was not good for me in this moment it, but it's only to show you uh, how the software uh, the d3 can help you in the process to uh, uh, tell you, to show you how it's going. Um, this is another one, uh, um, really nice actually. So uh, what's happening here? So we have uh, uh, a color calibration from D3. So uh, how it works. Um, in this case, we have uh, what we see here is that the bright image here, the brighter one, is the real view of the camera and uh, the darker one around is the virtual one. So what the tree uh, does is to send, uh, to do a calibra color calibration actually, and sending, uh, uh, how it works, sending pattern, color pattern on the LEDs. So the D3 can see himself sending this pattern and can calculate how the colors needs to be in, on the LEDs to match the, uh, Uh, we have so the, 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 the real world the, in the center and the virtual world uh, around. And then uh, this is the last one here, just to show you uh, the uh, set extension, how it works. Uh, DD3 is uh, extending the, the real world uh, in uh, virtual. So what I was doing here is to, is to switch off the uh, the virtual one, uh, just to see uh, how it is. I mean, you see, uh, so the D3 is extended the, the, the real world uh, in virtual. Um, that's it for me. It was just only to show you uh, what I've done. And then, uh, like I said, I'm quite happy how everything uh, worked together. Um, so I will end my share screen here and then uh, stop my video. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. That was fantastic. And really interesting to see the calibration process there as well. And you mentioned it was your first time and uh, it didn't really show, so well done. Very well done indeed. Um, we're gonna go across to Lands Short now at Disguise. Um, so over to you, Lands. 
Hello. Well, thank you, uh, Moses, for having us here today. And Netic, it's great to see what you're doing and being the first XR stage in Italy. I understand so that's really exciting stuff. So I thought I'd start off with showing the disguise showreel to show everything we do because XR is just one part of what we do. So let's go into that. So Disguise is a platform for creative and technical teams to imagine, create and deliver the world's most spectacular live experiences. Disguise was born in 2000 out of new technology developed by a creative agency to deliver show-stopping visuals at concerts like Massive Attack and U2. And since then, Disguise has been building a great community of artists and technologists who are always sharing workflows and, and new ideas. So we have all the elements you need to work in lots of different markets, whether it be esports, cruise ships, fixed install, live events, corporate presentations, theatre, broadcast. And it was during projects for film and TV that we discovered we had the ability to replace green screen with LED. Um, and that's when we developed our XR toolkit. So just finishing off here, we've got some theater examples here. And Dear Evan Hansen. And the disguise mantra that we repeat is this, imagine, create and deliver spectacular live experiences. So what is XR? What are we talking about today? So for disguise, Extended reality is our term for a collection of workflow tools which are focused around camera tracking and real-time content generation. And these workflows can be applied to traditional screens in a studio or with augmented reality or combine those two to create what we call mixed reality. And we can break this down into five steps. So this green screen replacement we keep talking about, this replacing it green screen with LED. So as soon as you do that, you have these screens emitting light onto the performer. So the lighting and shadows that you see become real on the person. That means uh, the reflections are real as well. So you can leave glass in your glasses. It's not gonna be reflecting green. You can have water in glasses as well. You know, your shiny watch, for example, any scenery you have, um, all the reflections are going to be that the real colour, not green. There is zero chroma keying going on. We don't need to do that. There's no green spill anywhere. And the presenter, the performer, because they can see the world around them, they react better to what's happening. They can use natural eye lines, point at things that's happening, dodge things that's flying towards them. There's no need for them to be looking at comfort monitors placed around the set, looking at it, trying to understand how they need to maybe mirror their movements to what's going on. Uh, so it's a lot more of a natural environment to be in. And that just speeds up the creativity. You know, All of the effects are happening in camera for the team so they can see what's going on and just speed up that whole cycle. The second stage, uh, we call camera tracking. So of course, we're here talking today because we support MOSIS. Um, we support multi-camera workflows. You don't have to be working with one. And the great thing about working with LEDs is that we can really speed up the calibration, the tracking calibration, lens calibration, because we can feed different images in front of the, um, in front of the camera. We can speed that up to about 10 minutes rather than being about four four hours. And because we're working in the disguise 3D environment, every camera move can be pre-visualized as well. Now, because we're working with a moving camera in real time, we need to be working with these real-time generative uh, engines. So we support Notch, which renders on the same hardware that's pushing out to the machine. And we also support Unity and Unreal. We have plugins for those. And that will be running on a separate um, hardware. And I'll talk more about that uh, a bit later. Um, so yeah, generative engines working in real time. 
We also deal with augmented reality. So that's the ability to render on top of the camera feed. And what's quite unique about uh, Disguise Workflow with LED is that you can actually render the augmented reality onto the backplate, onto the LED. So the performer can see uh, the augmented reality elements around them so they don't walk through them. And you can actually track the performer with uh, people tracking protocols so they can actually walk around AR elements and we can render it to the back plate or to the front plate uh, as well. So when the camera pans away from the LED, we saw earlier the set extension and we have this color calibration workflow um, and we have different levels of that. So you can do a quick calibration in three minutes or if you want to get into finer uh, color gradients, you can go up to say half hour color calibration process as well. And the compositing of the back plate and the front plate of the camera, that all happens on the Disguise platform as well. So the final stage, the fifth stage, is we just say the Disguise workflow because you know, we've been doing shows and live events for the past 20 years with projectors and such, and you can integrate all of those things around. You can control lights, you can control projection. So you might make an XR stage just a small part of a performance and you can still have the whole uh, other things that Disguise can do around that. So to recap over those points, uh, Disguise XR is the LED replacement, the camera tracking, generative content, AR and the Disguise workflow. And they can be used in in any way, we just call them all XR. So we've seen people using them for virtual film productions, in broadcast studios, music videos, um, AR for live events. You can maybe uh, have AR on IMAG screens, the big screens at the side of stages, or uh, in, in the middle of stadium shows. And we've seen it happening. We've seen people uh, doing virtual corporate presentations recently. Uh, we've had universities giving lectures to their students, which is a really interesting and engaging way. And we've also seen uh, House of Worship picking this up as well, being able to deliver ceremonies from this stage, having their audience around them virtually, um, you know, bringing people together in a, in a safe environment. So to dive into the software, this is what the Disguise interface looks like, as we've seen it a bit already today. And it's simulating the real world. It's, it's WYSIWYG. It's what you see is what you get like down to the pixel. Uh, so at the bottom of the screen, you can see the timeline. And that's for building up your events and queuing the, uh, the show, essentially. And in the scene here, we can see some LED, back wall and floor, uh, some cameras, a transmission screen on the right, and some sky panels. And like I said, all of these elements can be controlled within Disguise. We have lots of different protocols that integrate with all these different uh, hardwares. But for today, we're focusing on MOSIS. So we've opened up the um, main panel for the camera here. And you can see all of the different parameters we can adjust. And what we're particularly interested in is the tracking source. So we can control its position, rotation, zoom. And if we click on that tracking source, you can see we have the MOSIS uh, tracking source there. So you select that and then you can see that the parameters have gone green and that indicates that there's live data coming in. And you can see the camera in the middle there, the white wireframe is now pointing, pointing up. So opening up that uh, main camera window a bit more, if this was a real project, that's where you would see this real live feed appearing, which obviously has the Moses tracker on it. Uh, and moving the timeline along at the bottom, you can see we have the video layer with the live camera, and we have now added a notch effects layer, and that's how we do the AR elements, bringing in notch that we've seen people speak about already today. So it's just one layer on top. It's been rendered in real time, and if the camera moves, that, um, TV screen in AR would be moving with it. So Disguise has another feature called Render Stream that allows you to pass the MOSIS tracking data from Disguise to engines such as Unreal or Unity over the network. 
and those engines will position their camera in the same position, render the scene, and then pass it back over the network, uh, pass that frame back over the network with metadata attached so we know exactly what frame it's from. Uh, and then we map that onto the LED with the correct perspective. And then we can go one more step, which is the set extension. So you can now see in the top left, we've brought up the set extension parameter, which leaves the LED area untouched for the performer to move in, but it extends that virtual scene around the whole studio, which means the camera can move anywhere uh, and you wouldn't know that they were in a film studio, leaving the presenter fully immersed. So essentially, in a nutshell, super quick, that is uh, how Moses integrates with, with Disguise. So I'll just take this moment to thank Moses for having us. Uh, we've been working together with Moses for a while now, doing the initial testing for this technology. And it's been able to, uh, been great to present here today. So thank you and back to the Moses studio. Thank you, Lance. That was a very comprehensive walkthrough. Thank you for that. And uh, it's a pleasure to have yourself on the, uh, the webinar here. Um, so hopefully we've got some questions that have been coming in uh, throughout the webinar. Uh, I have my colleague, uh, Olex, uh, the R&D manager, who will be reading the questions out. And we'll be putting the questions to the panelists and uh, we'll go from there. So um, over to you, Olex Everyone. So yes, we indeed did have quite a few questions that came in. So first question, I believe, is for Tazio. Does the LED stage need to be cubic or can it be a different shape? So uh, it's not important, uh, I think, the cubic. You can, uh, you can have a, a, a back lead as you want. Uh, you can uh, use any measurement uh, you want for the back. I do think uh, it's best to always have uh, the floor. The important thing is if you want to use a sect extended, uh, the framing has to be wider than the screen. Uh, having a bigger screen makes the work easier for all parties. So you can make what you want. Hmm, absolutely. Thank you for the answer. Um, since we're on the topic of screens, what uh, pixel pitch of LEDs did you use? Uh, it's for me? Yeah. Okay, we, we use uh, 2.6, uh, it's around uh, uh, 192 uh, half meter. Is, uh, and uh, the, the pixel map, uh, it's so not so, uh, I, I, so I, I, I got a delivery raster and uh, it's one, 192 for panel. And I think it's okay. It's it's okay for us. <laughs> yeah. Would you have preferred more? No, 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 oh, no, no. Sorry. Right. By more, I mean more pixels per square inch. What would your ideal setup look like in this case? Uh, I think the uh, the the setup ideal. I think uh, the floor is the same that the back. Because the matching of the color, the matching for everything is it's better with the, with the same pitch for the floor, for the back. Uh, I think it's the best way to, to use maybe the same pitch for the floor, the same pitch for the back. Uh, all camera the same, all camera gel locked. And uh, I think for the uh, color calibration, for uh, calibration... Uh, um, for the observation when you make this in uh, D3, it's uh, perfect to have the all elements all the same. Of course. Thank you for this amazing answer. Now, next question is for you, Nicolas. What was the most challenging part of this project for you? Uh, for me, was everything was a challenge because it was the first time for me. Uh, but I should say... Uh, uh, the colors to match uh, the color of the LED. I mean, you have to uh, you have to match the color of the LED uh, with the D3, but uh, with the camera. Um, so I think it was a challenge to to uh, to do a good uh, setup with the color between LEDs and camera. And also for me was the uh, set extension to do 
a good uh, calibration uh, uh, in D3. Um, it was only for me, I mean, for me, everything was a challenge because it was the first time and like usual, uh, the first time is always uh, uh, more difficult, if I can say. Um, so to be honest, uh, everything was a challenge for me. So <laughs> not a worry. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we're going to do several projects uh, together. And each now other project is going to be a lot less of a challenge for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next question. Uh, how much lag is there between moving the camera and the LED wall emitting corresponding pixels? Lance, do you want to take that or maybe Nicholas? Yeah, what, what was the lag for your specific project, Nicholas? Because it de uh, depends had, entirely on the setup. Uh, I had 11 frames uh, for, uh, between the, the virtual and the real one. Um. Okay, thank you. Um, another question from the chat. Is there a way to use Moses in the scenario when we have the whole stage built from LED panels? So both floor, sides, front, floor, and top. Ben, do you want to take that or do you want me to answer it? No, go for it. Being R&D, I think that's right. <laughs> um, so theoretically, it is possible. Uh, you will need to put stickers still either on the top or on the floor. Uh, alternatively, what we use for a lot of exhibitions is we put a net up. So it's a semi-transparent net that we just put stickers on, for mostly for mobile setups. So honestly, depends on your use case. Contact infoatmosis.com and let's figure it out. Um, question for you, Lance. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a demo AR project available for inspection in your designer software? Uh, I believe we do have a demo AR project uh, in the download section of our website. Um, yeah, if we got the emails of the people, I can contact them afterwards with a link uh, to exactly where that is. Um, we should be able to send that over to you. Mm -hmm. Of course. So uh, at the very end of the presentation, we're going to be putting up a slide that will list all relevant contacts. So feel free to approach Lance directly with your question. Thank you. Um, another question. Um, wanted to ask about this guy's Unreal plugin and the Unity plugin. How does it work differently from Notch? So Notch, um, you, when you work inside Notch and you develop your, your look, you can then expose uh, some parameters that you want to change live and you then export that as a Notch block, which you can then copy and paste into the Notch uh, folder within Disguise, and that runs as a DLL within the Disguise engine on the same piece of hardware. When you're working with Unreal or Unity, that actually is rendered on a separate piece of hardware. So we have to send the tracking data over the network and back um, for that. So that's, that's the difference between Unreal and Unity. I, I say we, you would generally use Notch for more motion graphic looks um, and if you want to have perfect trees blowing in the wind, you'd go for something like Unreal uh, or Unity. Amazing. Another question. How lens focus and gen lock are calibrated with Moses? Ben, do you want to take that? Or do I want no, to? to you again. Over to me again. Okay, let's go. Um, <laughs> so what we do is we encode the lens using either external mechanical encoders or a serial cable that reads directly from the lens servo. Um, and Genlock, well, we sync to Genlock like every other broadcast system out there in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So from the disguise point of view, uh, as Nicolas, Stasio, and Lance told you before, um, you disguise is simply receiving zoom and focus values from the star tracker system. Um, as you want, well, do you want to talk you, Nicholas? Uh, yeah, we were receiving zoom and focus uh, straight into D3 uh, as well uh, for the uh, position and rotation. Uh, so all the data are coming from uh, Moses straight into D3, so the D3 knows how to uh, manage uh, the virtual camera in the stage. Great, and I think also that um, we've got external mechanical encoders, but 
if your lens uh, is an ENG type lens, Canon Fujinon, then you've got a 20 pin virtual port. Uh, we can use a, a digi cable uh, instead of the uh, external mechanical encoders. So a couple of options there. Another question. Would it be possible to use the same star tracker system in different stages? Is that for me? I believe so. Feel ah. free to answer that. Yeah, no, there, there is. You can save multiple uh, star maps on the star tracker processor. So very straightforward. I mean, once you've saved those maps, uh, when you wheel it into a different studio, it's just a matter of seconds in the actual settings, uh, load the map, and the system will immediately know where it is. So it's an absolute system. So yes, you can. Amazing. Thank you. Another question, I believe, is for Lance and Nicholas. What is the device you use for calibrating the LED walls? Nicholas, do you want to go for that one? The device we use to calibrate? So essentially that there is no device, right? It is you're using disguise and it's putting um, patterns out onto the LED. So yeah. it's actually built within disguise. And that's when I was talking about we can really speed that process up because we can feed many different patterns in front of the, the camera to, 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 to calibrate the, the lens. Um, and how long does that usually take? How long does it usually take? Um, half an hour, 10 minutes, half an hour. It's really depending on how many observations you're doing um, before it's, it's working perfectly for you, depending on your LED setup. How long did it take on Nicholas's project? Half an hour. Half, half an, an hour. hour. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Good to know. Thank you for your answer. Uh, is there a way we can control sky panel light with this guys to match corresponding color tone? Just repeat, repeat that question. Sorry. Is there a way we can we control sky panel light with this guys to match corresponding color tone? Nicholas or Lance, I believe. Was it Skype? Did yeah. you say sky? Sky panel. Yeah, the oh, the sky panels. Yeah, the sky panels. Yeah. So, so what you can do is um, there's different ways you can control them. Uh, you can take a piece of video and you can sample um, areas of the video. So you can assign the brightness of the video, the intensity, uh, and the the RGB values, and you can send that over ArtNet to uh, lights as well. So that's one way. So if you had moving video, you can have the, the panels changing uh, as, the, as the video is moving past as well. So that's, we have other protocols as well to control the lights, but ArtNet is, ArtNet is quite a popular one. Mm. Nicholas, I think the next question is for you. We're getting quite a lot of questions about color, color, color correction in this project and things like that. So how do you color calibrate the LED wall? uh what what we done was to uh make uh the white balance uh, between the camera and the leds trying to achieve the best result and then uh, after that when the camera is happy with the led you can start with the d3 because otherwise the d3 will uh, see something that is uh, wrong i mean if the camera looks something that is not real uh, good uh, the D3 as well will not do uh, the job. I mean, so uh, first you need to do the, your white balance between camera and, and LEDs, and then you do the color calibration uh, with D3. And if something is not uh, good, you need to check again uh, why, and normally it's the, something between the camera and the LEDs. Thank you for the answer. Another question we have is, how suitable is Star Tracker for live events and stage entertainment applications? How susceptible is it to dynamic lighting, to pyrotechnics, to water? Ben, do you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's very robust in that respect. Um, so the Star Tracker, the actual sensor, is actually immune to lighting. Um, that includes sunlight, uh, and also includes if you're actually moving your lighting around as well and covering some of the stars. So yeah, it's, it's completely unaffected. Um, during some of the demos that we do when we focus our webinars on Star Tracker is we, we get a spotlight, um, floodlight actually, and we shine it straight into the top of uh, the sensor, uh, probably around about sort of six inches away from it, and it still tracks. 
Uh, and the way that it does that is it is immune to lighting, but it's got a 120 degree field of view as well. So you're blocking, you know, sort of uh, 60, 70 percent of the view and it still picks up the stars and optical is still good. So, yeah, not affected. Thank you very much. Another question, I believe also for you. Uh, can we use the XR wall setup with the Panasonic AWU-150 with Star Tracker you showed last week? Yes. <laughs> Easy <laughs> enough. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the Panasonic, um, you know, that's a PTZ head. Uh, we've had the Star Tracker to it. Um, I think, you know, if, if you're just using a PTZ head and uh, you're using it for sort of LED walls, it, it really doesn't come alive until you actually start moving uh, the camera positional wise. And uh, that's what Star Tracker enables you to do. So absolutely. Yes. Amazing. Thank you. Another question from the Q&A section. Can you also render out of first from, from the point of view of the talent for more accurate reflections? That's absolutely not my area of expertise. I assume it's either Lance or Nicholas. So is this, is, just repeat that question one more time <clears throat> so I fully understand. Can you also render out of Frostroom from the point of view of the talent for more accurate reflections? So you can use tracking systems such as black tracks to which you can place beacons on on a person so you would know exactly where they are. And then that appears as a point uh, within disguise that you can attach things, that you can child things to. Um, so I assume you could um, have elements happening from the, the point of view of the person. Um, does that answer the, answer the question? I believe it does. Unfortunately, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew more about this topic. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, any parameter that we have within Disguise, we can then pass to those engines. So we could pass that 3D position data into the Unreal Engine, and then they can then, you, you work with that point to do what, what you want to do from there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Really Thank you for the answer. So, Alex, I think we're sort of running about 10 minutes over now. So, um, have we got many more questions to go through? Is there... We just have a couple more and then Don't carry on. wrap up. So, Tazio, question for you. Um, yep. Why did you pick a crane for your project? Why not a steady cam or a rail cam system? Oh, you can, I think you can use what you want. Uh, you can, uh, uh, we choose a, a crane because it uh, gives all your possibility to have a slow and uh, steady movement and you can also go up a bit with the camera so uh, you can choose what you want uh, for us it's better better crane because you got the slowly movements like uh, like a tv show and you can go up uh, you can go down but basically you have to um to to decide before uh, start to to um to uh, building a crane uh, where you want to go with the crane. This position is, an uh, is one of uh, the first observation and this is the last uh, position and you can make a great movement and we got all observation in all movements. So you can go with the first observation with zoom out and this is the position, this is the, the final position and then we, you can increase with observation it's in this movement. So you can have a uh, uh, slowly movement with no no jittering, uh, no problems, and uh, we we choose a crane for this one. But you can you can choose a um, Steadicam or a tripod uh, cam or a Panasonic uh, as as you want. Thank you for your answer. So Ben, I think it's back over to you. Great, excellent. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our webinar. Um, there will be plenty more coming from us uh, in the coming weeks and months. So please, hopefully you can join us again for those. Uh, I hope you found this informative. We've got contacts on the screen now. So uh, we've got myself there. You've got Gary, who uh, ma manages the America's sales. Uh, Tazio, Anna, Lanz and Nicholas. Uh, I'd like to thank all the panelists today for taking part. And uh, I'd like to congratulate um, Natik on a really great job.
on the setup you've got there. Thank so, you. Is that, is that our first time? <laughs> yeah. Well, as I, as I said earlier, it doesn't show. So really fantastic job and uh, Thank you. we hope to be working with you uh, a lot in the future. So I think that's it, Thank guys. Stay Thank safe, you. everyone. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks for having us. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.